No matter how much effort you have put into applying to medical or dental school, there are certain things that you couldn't possibly anticipate that are going to happen when you get there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the five things that I wish I knew before I started medical school. If you're new to the channel, FutureDoc is the online platform where we help you get into your first choice medical and dental school. Check out the channel for specifics on how to be in the top 10% of applicants to make sure that you get that place at medical or dental school. And make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications because every Every week we're going to be giving you a up-to-date bit that you should be doing at that stage of the application to help you stand out. The first thing I wish I knew about before becoming a doctor or a dentist is how bad the FOMO can be. In a medical career you do have to sacrifice and sometimes that means studying when your friends are partying or missing out on weekends or whatever it is, a trip home maybe. As you go through the degree, the time that you get for summer reduces significantly. When you're there having to maybe study for exams or maybe you're on placement and you're seeing other people off with really long summer holidays going traveling, it can be a bit disheartening and make you question whether this is something that you really want to do. But I would recommend that during that time that you stay off social media and actually when you have a group of medics or a group of dentists that are all in it together, you do form a really tight bond. So you know, stick to those guys and make sure that you are really there for each other to show that you can have fun where you are and don't feel like you're missing out as much. And really, it's all about that you know short-term sacrifice for long-term gain. Although it's nice to be away for summer and you know you envy those people who are on holiday for that couple of weeks that they're away, they will probably envy you in the long term when you're in a really great position as a doctor and. Uh, it will be worth all of that time that you put into it. So try and think long term on these sorts of things. The second thing I wish I knew is just how cliquey medics can be. Uh, the rumors are true that when you get together, just like when a group of workmates get together or people who share a common interest, you tend to talk shop a lot. And it is true that the chat can be very medic -y and can be quite geeky at times. So really, it's really good to mix it up by making non-medical friends while you're at university. This will keep things fresh and interesting, be good for your mental health, good for variety, and just good to kind of get away when medicine is quite intense at times and it's exam season and any medic that you speak to is so stressed about exams that that's all they can talk about. That can usually bring you down with them. One of the best ways to combat this and what I did when I was at university is join some societies. Your student union will have loads of societies based on anything from religion to hobbies, uh, favorite movies or like even wine. And then of course you've got sports societies. So I joined loads. I, in fact, I joined so many. I joined the Surf Society, the Snowboard Society, uh, loads of them. I can't even remember now. I think I joined a football team and really just embraced that un being at university to try new things, meet new people. And it served really well. For most of university, I had a really healthy balance of medic and non medic friends. The third thing that actually took me quite a lot by surprise when I joined medical school is how much you can doubt yourself or get imposter syndrome for being at medical school. You're surrounded by some very intelligent people and some people who like to show off about how much they know. Now if you're not like that and you're a bit more humble, you can feel like there are so many big personalities about you that maybe you don't belong or you don't deserve a place or maybe you're not even smart enough to be there. The first thing that I would say about that is don't compare yourself to other people. Everybody is different and they have different strengths. And just because somebody is very good in lectures and retains a lot of knowledge doesn't mean that they'll necessarily be a better doctor than you when it comes to interacting with patients. So just steer clear of the whole comparison thing. It is a guaranteed source of unhappiness. But what you should also do is equally don't be afraid to speak out if you're struggling. There are lots of people that will support you. So you'll have your housemates, you have your course mates. That, and like I say, this is where having medic friends is really helpful. But then there are also lecturers and the medical school themselves that you can speak to. Do not be shy to do this. There are no consequences to admitting that you're struggling and they are there to support you, but also will make you a better doctor. That ability to recognize when you're struggling, seek help and find a way to improve or get better or get around it is one of the traits of being a good doctor and something that you need to start practicing as soon as you're at medical school. The fourth thing is how easy it can be for your wellness to fall by the wayside. Healthcare professional and doctor burnout is a real threat to our healthcare system and it's something that 
you know, we are known to have a noble, self-sacrificing profession where we're helping others. But if you don't look after yourself first, there's that saying that um, you can't fill, you can't pour from an empty cup, or you know, it's that thing of when you're on a flight, they always say, you know, put your own oxygen mask on before helping others. So because if you're incapacitated, if you're not able to help, then you're no use to anybody. And it's the same if you let yourself get to a stage where you are letting yourself burn out, you're not looking after yourself, then how are you expected to look after others? So for me to make sure that I maintain my wellness or the things that fell out the window when I didn't maintain my wellness were making sure that I slept properly. I think that's number one. I find that if I was getting less than eight hours sleep, I was really struggling to concentrate and then I was getting into that whole cycle of tired, so you have coffee, so you don't sleep as well, so you're more tired and you just keep going round and round. And that was a recipe for disaster for me. Then I noticed the next thing is that I would not exercise. If you're not exercising, I felt like I wasn't tired and then the whole cycle gets perpetuated. The final and most important thing that I wish I would have known before going to medical school was how to cope with the sheer volume that you have to learn. Now, when you go to medical school, you realize that all of the information you have, not only just breadth, but depth of knowledge as well. Some of the mistakes people make is they try and cut corners. And what I did, and I really regret doing this, was trying to learn to pass exams rather than gaining the knowledge for actually using it later on as a doctor. What I felt once I started taking a long-term approach and being like, actually, I really want to understand this as well as I can, really not just memorize it and, and try and pass a test, but actually think how I'm going to implement this in the future and gain as much knowledge as I can so that I can really uh, be the best doctor that I can possibly be. That I think was a mindset shift that really helped me. Now, the other thing is when you have such a sheer volume of material to get through, before I went to medical school, what I liked was to have my own beautifully handwritten notes in my own handwriting that I really owned and felt ownership of. And that way, usually I felt like I engaged with the material more. The thing that I didn't realize and when I got to medical school is that that is such a waste of time because in the time that it took me to essentially really what I was doing was just copying out stuff again and again and it wasn't even going in from that that in that time that I did that I probably could have read the material and really tried to understand it probably three or four times and that was a big downfall that I had at medical school of trying to get everything in writing and I just didn't I ran out of time and didn't perform particularly well in my first year exams because of doing that because of wasting so much time. So it felt like I was working hard and psychologically, it was almost like a lazy way of working hard. It might be very different for you of how you like to work best, but I feel like it's worth the time investment in the first year to just spend a bit of time working out what works best for you and what results in you having the most time efficient way of understanding the knowledge to the level that you need to. So I hope you found that useful. If you are on your way to medicine and you haven't quite got that place yet and are part of the application journey, I recommend that you check out this video here because it's going to give you all of the resources from the channel for each stage of the application, whether it's getting work experience, writing your personal statement, choosing the right medical school for you, when it's one of the UCAT GAMSAT or BMAT exams, or if you're just trying to get through interviews, that video will give you everything that you need and point you in the direction for different playlists or different videos that are kind of must watches to make sure you get in that top 10% of applicants to help you guarantee a place. So thank you for watching and I'll see you over in that video.